Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, this brings back memories. Finally, we're gonna revisit the YouTube channel called There Is No Clash. Today with their video, How the Universe is Going to End. Quran confirms Higgs boson. Recently, we reacted to Imam al Ghazali, and Imam al Ghazali back in the day used the language of philosophy to convey the message of Islam. The reason for that choice was that philosophy during the lifetime of al Ghazali was prevalent. It was the language of choice amongst the scholars. So, therefore, it was only right to choose philosophy as the medium. In today's day and age, I don't have to tell you. Technology, science, is the name of the game. Therefore, what better way to convey the message of Islam other than through science? With no further ado, let's have a look. Hi. Hi. On September the 7th, 2014, in an article in the Daily Mail, the famous physicist Professor Stephen Hawking warns that according to his calculations, the planet we're living in is unstable and therefore might collapse. This news, unsurprisingly, sent the media world into a buzz. Dr. Joseph Licken, a theoretical physicist at the University of Chicago, confirmed Professor Hawkins' findings when he said, if you use all the physics that we know now and you do what you think is a straightforward calculation, it is bad news and it may be that the universe we live in is inherently unstable. We're sort of right on the edge where the universe can last for a long time, but eventually it should go boom. There's no principle that we know of that would put us right on the edge. Dr. Benjamin Alnack, a theoretical physicist at the University of Cambridge, further elaborates on the reason for this instability when he talks about a particular particle that exists in the universe called the Higgs boson particle. The observed 126 giga electron volts Higgs boson mass seems to imply the universe does not exist in the lowest possible energy state, but is in fact positioned in a slightly unusual place. If the Higgs boson mass were really 127 giga electron volts and the top mass were a little lower than its most likely value, then actually the universe would be completely stable and the vacuum would be in the true minimum. Meaning that under the simplest assumptions, the measured mass of Higgs could mean that the universe is unstable and destined to fall apart. So basically, yeah, this makes sense, of course, because it is the creation after all. The creation cannot be perfectly stable. Perfect stability you will find only within God. God is eternal. The creation is temporary and by default has to fall apart at some point. Basically, according to numerous physicists, careful calculations and computations, we're all doomed. The Quran, which dates back 1400 years ago, substantiates the predictions and calculations of physicists such as Hawking, Lichen and Alenach. The potential of the universe collapsing and being wiped out is real. The creator sure. of the universe is well aware of what he created. But it's not all bad news. The Quran then goes on to assure us that God prevents the universe from collapse when he writes in the Quran, God holds the heaven from falling on the earth. Furthermore, the Quran states that God prevents the universe from being wiped out. God holds the heavens and the earth lest they are wiped out. So what will the end of the world look like exactly and what part do the Higgs boson particles play in all this? In 1960, the British scientist Peter Higgs predicted the existence of tiny particles that we cannot see but that are, in fact, in us and all around us. These particles are responsible for giving objects their mass and explain why particles have the mass that they do. Without Higgs boson, you and I and everything we see around us would have no mass and therefore would not be able to exist. The other physicists at that time also agreed with Mr. Higgs that this particle exists. Yeah, the Higgs boson particle has been called the God particle as well. He had sound calculations to prove his theory and they called these subatomic particles Higgs particles after Peter Higgs. On March the 14th, 2013, about half a century after it was first predicted, scientists at CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, tentatively confirmed they have found the Higgs boson particle, and the Nobel Prize in Physics was subsequently awarded jointly to Peter Higgs and his colleague Francois Englert. 
In order to discover the subatomic Higgs particle, CERN had built a large hadron collider at the cost of about $10 billion to simulate the conditions of the formation of the universe. In 1993, a group of British physicists went to the UK science minister at the time, William Waldegrave, to ask if he could help fund the building of the large hadron collider in order to help prove the existence of the Higgs particle. Having no clue what they were talking about, Mr. Waldegrove announced he would award a vintage bottle of champagne to the physicist who came up with the best way to explain the Higgs field and the Higgs boson to the general public. And it was Professor David Miller who took home the prize with his famous analogy. Imagine a cocktail party of political party workers who are uniformly distributed across the floor, all talking to their nearest neighbours. If the ex-Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher enters the room, many of the workers will run toward her and form a cluster around her. As she moves, other workers run toward her, while the ones she has left return to their places. Because of the knot of people running toward her forming a cluster and then returning back to their spots, she acquires mass. These clusters, which run towards Mrs. Thatcher and then disappear as they return back to their spots, are an analogy to Higgs bosons. So if that's the Higgs field, how does the Higgs boson fit into all of this? Let's pretend our crowd of partygoers is uniformly spread across the room. Now consider a rumour passing through our room full of people. Those near the door run to hear it first and cluster together to get the details. Then they return to their original spots and tell their neighbours, who then run and cluster together to hear it too. Okay. Then they return to their original spots and tell their next neighbours and so on. The result will be a wave of clusters running across the room that disappear as soon as they run. These clusters are an analogy to Higgs bosons. So to summarise, Higgs boson is an elusive subatomic particle that we can't see but can see how it gives particles substance or mass. It's essentially what gives shape, size and mass to everything that exists. But the problem is that the Higgs particle that the LHC had found possesses a mass of approximately 126 giga electron volts. And this has made physicists rather nervous because they believe it should be 127. According to physicists such as Stephen oh, Hawking, you know Joseph Lichen and Benjamin Allenach, this discrepancy could very well mean the collapse of the universe and everything in it, including you and I, as everything will become massless, and they are not alone in their assertions. In fact, the Quran also swears that this will take place when the world ends, when it says, it is the day when people will be like scattered moths and the mountains shall be as loosened wool. People like moths and mountains like wool Sounds like mass loss to me. But there's something else too. In chapter 81 of the Quran, a chapter where God describes in detail the events of the end of the world, there are two particular verses that are of great interest to us and what we've just learned. So verily I, God, swear by clusters you can't see, as soon as they run, they disappear. That's the English translation, but the words used in the original Arabic are more nuanced than a translation can express. Three words in particular that are used in this verse are khunas and al-jawari al khunas Khunas refers to something invisible and al-jawari means something that is running. al khunas refers to something that disappears and returns back to its original spot. So if you put the three words together, we're talking about invisible clusters that run and that disappear almost as soon as they appear. Almost as soon as they start running, they stop and disappear. So what are these clusters that the Quran is describing? than none other than the infamous and elusive Higgs boson particles, which explains why the end of the universe will come about not due to volcanic... Okay, that sounds a bit far-fetched. It would be interesting to hear what the scholars have said about that particular passage up until this very day. ...like activity, meteor showers or an asteroid hitting the Earth, as NASA claims, the universe will end due to mass loss. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. What should I say? I was pretty quiet throughout the video because I'm not a scientist, nor can I truly confirm that this is what the Quran is speaking about. Please let me know in the comment section what you guys think. Are there any sources that could confirm that this is potentially the Higgs boson particle?
But speaking of the Higgs boson particle, speaking about quantum mechanics, atoms and what not, I believe that this is really the transition between the scientific realm and the spiritual realm. Because finally, after such a long period of absolutely puristic material research done in science, scientists themselves discover that there is a layer of reality that they cannot fully explain. Now, I'm not not saying that the world of quantum mechanics, particles, atoms is the unseen realm. No, it is simply unseen to the human eye. However, you can still observe it somehow. The unseen realm lays beyond that realm as well. But therefore, as I said, this particular realm could be the breakthrough for the atheistic materialistic mind into God. Even if you look into prominent scientists from back in the day, ultimately they came to the conclusion that God must exist. Albert Einstein said, the more I study science, the more I believe in God. Or Louis Pasteur said, the more I study nature, the more I stand amazed at the work of the creator. Science brings man nearer to God. Lord William Thompson Calvin, who said, if you study science deep enough and long enough, it will force you to believe in God. But even Isaac Newton was of the conviction, it seems probable to me that God in the beginning formed matter in solid, messy, hard, impenetrable, movable particles. Let's end it with a quote of Simon Well, who said, a science which does not bring us nearer to God is worthless. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon, thank you so much for your ongoing support. All the links are in the description box below. As always, guys, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.